Johnny Ray, so great to have the opportunity to talk to you. How you doing and how are you holding up? Uh, I'm pretty peachy. You know, I'm pretty peachy. I'm excited about the movie coming out. I'm excited about people being vaccinated and, yes. you know, the world seeming to come to some kind of, uh, you know, normalcy in that regard. So, you know, it's sunny outside, so I'm good. Same here. Same here. I'm talking to you from Toronto, Canada. So uh, oh, we're, we're getting favorite cities. I love Toronto. Well, you know, once once these borders open up, we got to get you back. Hey, shoot, I might have to move there. What can be going on in America? So, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, I hear you, my friend. I hear you. Um, congratulations on the film. You know, I, I've been thinking about it. I watched it a couple days ago and I can't stop thinking about it because um, it makes me think a lot about here's a guy you play Rufus who is trying to hold on to his family club it's been in the family for a long long time doesn't want to let go kind of knows he has to but at the end of the day you know he's got to do the right thing and you know we got to make money right and I'm right. starting to think about it as I was watching and I'm going boy this really hits home right now with what we've gone through in this past year about all these places that had to close because they had no choice yeah. Have you think about something like that, you know, after the fact now that you've made this film and maybe watched it back? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we've all been having that conversation where, you know, with things opening up, you're like, wow, I don't, is, that, is that place still open? Right. Wow, our, our favorite brunch places and our favorite, you know, venues, our favorite places to go. And so it's, just a, it's a hard thing to uh, wrestle with. And I think, you know, so much of the country is at conversation um, about how that came about. I mean, obviously, we didn't know that that was going to be the case when we were filming this project. Yeah. Um, for me, I connected to that um, just as an African-American and how how important, you know, um, those family connections, like 100 years means something like very important in our community, given where America was 100 years ago. So right. to be able to, so to have to let go of something like that, that internal uh, uh, struggle um, it's very metaphorical. I mean, you know, from a family, but also, you know, with with you know what we're talking about, America's trying to figure out things that they should let go from a hundred years ago. Uh, you know, right yeah. now as well. Um, so so yeah, so it was a, it was a very powerful uh, metaphor to have to to wrestle with as, as an actor and as a person. Yeah, I was going to ask when as you were playing Rufus and you got to kind of really explore him and got to know him as as it went on. How did you feel that you related to this guy? Um, I related to his musicality and I think I related to his internal struggle about, like I said, trying to move on from things, Yeah. you know, those, uh, you know, those, I was, I was just at Runyon Canyon and, you know, Runyon Canyon is this place where people hike here in Los Angeles and on the fences, they have all these locks that people put like little metaphors and little messages and things like that. And yeah. one of them says, don't quit. And that's something that we all tell ourselves, don't quit, don't do this. And a lot of times that can be really bad advice because it's really about self-awareness mm -hmm. and what you are supposed to be doing, like finding out like, what is my reason for being on this planet? So like some people think they should be singers and you really might should be a chef or you should make shoes or I don't know, you should, you should, you know, I don't know, plant trees, but it's about having the self-awareness to figure out what, what am I supposed to do? And, 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 and I think that's what, you know, Rufus is going through and I've been trying to figure that out, you know, in my own uh, personal journey. So you know, moving on is a very hard thing to do, whether that's with relationships, romantic or family, yeah. or with any that's been in the family for 100 years. Yeah, he's, um, this character, Rufus, he's surrounded by people who really support him and really love him, his good friends, his old bandmates, you know, his sister. Um, what was the camaraderie like with you guys? Like, was it all instant when you got together on this? Yeah, yeah, we had a great time. I mean, being on set, we were at one venue the entire time. Um, shooting together so it, it was a very family environment and everybody got to play off each other um, you know Isaiah blessed with the opportunity to be able to improv in certain scenes and we were just really creating this thing together as we as we as we moved along so you know it was a uh, beautiful vibrations on set yeah and then uh, this guy Rufus he, he likes his drink no no question about it he likes to take a few and uh, there's one scene though that you have with Kate Cobb that I like because you guys are down in those beers and then okay one take or did you have to kind yes, of actually, yeah once because that's the first time I've ever chugged a beer if you'll believe it um so I was nervous I I was like you know when Isaiah told us we need to do this I was like I was like, I hope I don't vomit. I mean, maybe that'll uh, that'll work. But there was just a lot of burping that happened uh, in the scene. And then after the scene, 
Uh, so I was like, hey, I'm going to try to nail this the first go round because I don't know if my stomach can take four right. of these things. <laughs> yeah. Now, Kate told me it was, what was it, apple cider or did you really have beer? It was some kind of, it was some kind of faux beer concoction oh. that was, that didn't taste, you know, very good at all. Right. Uh, so you're fighting that as well, but hey, you know, this, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. Absolutely. And I want to mention the music in this movie. It's awesome. I'm wondering, yeah. I know there were a couple of live performances, but mostly it's a soundtrack. When you were like, was it playing as you were acting or did you have that kind of motivation from the music? Cause it's really good. Yes. Yes. There, like it was a musical uh, set. It was a musical experience. The music was playing sometimes during the scene, sometimes, you know, uh, pre-filming so that we can you know get into that vibe and yeah. this is an opportunity to shout out Euro Thomas like he's freaking awesome and he's also from Portland like me shout out Portland Oregon yeah. Uh, yeah. so but you know it was my first time hearing his music and I was blown away you know yeah. we got to you know see him live and you know his his voice is so soulful so how can you not you know like I said inject that into the character yeah it was really good I hope there's a soundtrack for this film because I'd like to download yeah. It. like yeah it's yeah. I believe it's going to be on Spotify. Um, you can search Rollers um, awesome. on, on when the when the film comes out um, on the morrow. Okay, I'll, I'll look for it for sure. I have to ask you, you um, come from a background of theater, spoken word poetry, you know, you're a pretty well-rounded dude. How has that helped you shape as an actor? Uh, the, I think the more experiences you have as an artist, you I think the older you get, you realize you can't keep everything in these separate boxes. I wish I could go back to my college self. You're like, I'm a theater teacher and film and poetry's over here at the clubs. When it, they all kind of inform each other at the end of the day, because some characters, there'll be poetry in them. And then when you're writing poetry and you're trying to figure out, okay, should this be capitalized or not? Your actor self will say, well, this, this you need a period here because this is the end of the thought as opposed to a comma, which is a sustained inflection. And you can do this so that they wind up informing each other and you know that's just a beautiful uh I'm, I'm happy to be in that place as an artist um to where I can you know have my feet stretched in these different places but then they all are channeling you know through this you know this this base here yeah and a few years ago we got to see you in that amazing series underground wow that was really unbelievable um what was it like to shoot something like that uh it was a gift it was a gift to pay homage to my ancestors in that way. Um, that's what it felt like being on set, um, you know, and and bringing like breathing life into into those characters and Sam specifically, especially because he was um, from the subtext that, that that we had discussed that he was dealing with mental health issues. Yeah. Uh, um, so like usually usually. Uh, people of the past, especially when you're dealing with slavery and the Holocaust and those like big things, sometimes the victimhood can be two dimensional because we forget that these people are people right. that also masturbated and also might have had mental health problems and might have had these other things that would contribute to why they may have been lynched or maimed or this because at that particular time there was no mental health. People didn't know schizophrenia existed or people didn't know autism existed in those things. So like that was one of the, 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 the things that I was most proud to be able to, 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 to explore. Because like I said, a lot of times it becomes a lot about the event as opposed to the people in you know, said event and what they were dealing with specifically and individually. Yeah, I'm excited for people to see you in Rollers, but I know, you know obviously the pandemic, no one's really been working and stuff, but do you have anything now coming up that you're gonna be working on that we'll see you in? Um, I've got a couple irons in the fire. I've got a book that I'm working on, a, a collection of poetry that I've been working on. So I've been keeping my nose to the grindstone. So I'm very excited about, you know, what is, is to come the rest of 2021 and getting into 2020. Good. Stay on the lookout. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll look out for that. But uh, congratulations on Rollers. I thought you did such a good job. And, and uh, yeah, it's a really special film. Congratulations. And lovely to have the opportunity to talk to you, Johnny Ray. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the funny paper. Absolutely. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace.